Yeah. Without mentioning numbers, uh, which is sort of hard to do, to give you all an idea of the scaling of these systems. So in 2020, we built our first AI supercomputer for OpenAI. Uh, it's the supercomputing environment that trained GPT-3. And so, like, we're going to just choose marine wildlife as our uh, scale marker. So you can think of that system uh, about as big as a shark. So the next system that we uh, built, um, Scale-wise is about as big as uh, an orca, uh, and like that is the system in uh, that we delivered in 2022 that trained GPT-4. The system that we have just deployed is uh, like scale-wise uh, about as big as a whale relative to like you know the shark-sized supercomputer and this orca-sized supercomputer. And it turns out like you can build a whole hell of a lot of AI with a whale-sized supercomputer. Just want everybody to really, really be thinking clearly about, and like um, this is gonna be our segue to talking with Sam, is the next sample is coming. So like this whale-sized supercomputer is hard at work right now building the next set of capabilities that we're going to put into your hands. The first of those is that there is no secret instruction manual. I mean, I talked to OpenAI, I talked to Google, I talked to Microsoft, Anthropic, all of these organizations on a regular basis. And um, I think people have this model that they know what these models do and what they're capable of doing in your field, and they don't. Nobody knows anything, right? That's either comforting or upsetting. It's up to you. But um, it's not like they, when, when GPT, ChatGPT was released, they thought homework would be destroyed as a result of this. They didn't even there is some early evidence I've seen that suggests that coders are actually the worst at working with AI because AI doesn't work like code. Like, code shouldn't argue with you. It shouldn't make moral objections to your points. It shouldn't give you different answers every time. AI does all of those things. What AI is best at, actually, is if working like a human being. It's not a human being. You don't make a mistake. But it, it works like working with a human being. And I find, and in, uh, and in our research, uh, we're starting to see some indications of this early on, that teachers are actually among the best workers with AI. Because what you need to do is understand the AI's mindset. It doesn't have a mind, but it, thinks it works like a person. If you understand how to give clear instructions, you understand where someone's going off course, you understand how to give her corrections, you're actually going to be really good at prompting AI. And one of the things I want to see is more hands-on by less technologists and more teachers, instructors, educators, who I think will actually find they're very good at working with these systems. Because you've, you work with many other minds on a regular basis. You're used to giving instruction. You're used to seeing where someone goes wrong. All of those skills you'll find are very valuable in this case. What's really exciting about AI is that instructors who know their own environment have the ability to build their own sets of tools or modify tools that are responsive to their environment. Instead of taking away authority and making it more to do, it's about giving yourself authority and control in a way that we've never had before, democratizing access to education technology right now. Are robots about to become humanoid in the next, say, decade or so? I think people are going in the wrong direction on uh, robotics. What happens is almost all the energy all over the world is, has been spent in building very stupid physical robots that go around and do things that uh, any one-year-old can do. Yeah. And, uh, uh, whenever I meet somebody doing that, I tell them to quit the hardware and work on the theory of theories about how to make it smarter, because then you can make a very clumsy robot and it and program it to be graceful. <laughs>